All right, let's get into Shadowbringers dungeons. Once again, basically all going to be above Sestasha because there's some ri and some really really good dungeons in here again. So start. Let's just get right into it. We have uh the the whole Mister Switch is a good intro dun dungeon. It l looks great. You go through different f areas of the town. You go through the foresty area, you get through the forest to get to more open fields and farmland, and then you get into town proper. That's a cool evolution. I really like that evolution of the dungeon areas that you go through. The dungeon enemies don't really evolve at all. You get some different enemies, but it's not like an evolution of enemies. It's a changing of enemies. Uh, to Fire and Sword, I believe that's the correct name for it, is a good music track. It's pretty It's hype for what you can do this is the introduction of trusts and for as weak as they are that's it's a cool introduction for them to show off what they can do uh first boss this is where they start going all in on boss design i would say for leveling dungeons yeah up to this point we've had some pretty difficult dungeons with some difficult bosses with lots of mechanics but this is where like okay we s take alamigo just the finale, that's the baseline for all dungeons going forward. Because first boss of this dungeon has a decent tank buster, a decent raid wide, uh, and a small AoE around it, large AoEs around, all the different orbs, the line AoEs it can do, the dashes, the giant cone. This boss has a lot of stuff it can do, but it introduces it all slowly and methodically and it all adds up together and it's it's really it's a really good introduction of this is what dungeoning is like going forward get ready and then you get to the second boss you get to the trickster i think it's called i'm not gonna say the actual name but i think it's called the trickster as the actual boss name I wish they would have saved that this boss for like later in the story so that there's a more of an arc to it but as a boss it's really it's a good boss it good placement on the tanks because you get you get the you place it in the middle you get the big circle of aoe's around and there's one small area that you in a little small like quarter of the arena that is safe to go into so you all stack mid, take that, boss drags the boss to the edge, and then you all loosely spread around the boss, but all stay melee range. Okay, I remember why I was thinking about that, the, the being the trickster. One of the attacks is the tickler. That's the tank buster, I'm pretty sure. So okay, so it's not the trickster. I don't remember what it's forgiven something. Cause it's, it, cause it's a, it's a light warden, or not a light warden, but it's forgiven something, that's, act, that's it. Uh, I don't remember the name, I just remember it being a fun boss. You have, to, there's a lot you do, and then the tank also has to bring it back to the middle. So tank brings it to the middle, ring of AoEs, bring it to the edge after the stack market puts another puddle in the middle, loose spread, bring it back to the middle as soon as the AoEs go away, repeat. It's a good tank exercise and a good party exercise of stop running away from the boss. Be near the boss. You shouldn't be super far away from the boss. That is not a good thing. Bah. But I, I'm, I'm gonna... And then the final boss as well is really cool, really interesting, does a lot of things. It's hell for casters just because of the, the constant spinning phase that is hell for casters but in general it's not too awful but uh the line aoe's that's a real big introduction to line aoe's or line uh line stack markers uh yeah the spreads there's all a bunch of things that it does the the chains but it gives you a lot of time to react to the change which is the change is good but yeah and uh yeah i'm I think, honestly, this is at least low S. Like, the quality is there. There's an extreme quality to the dungeon. 
that much is clear. So I'm gonna... It's more consistent than these two. More consistent than Doma. But I would say I like Mach... No, I like it more than Machian's Heart. I don't like it as much as Zelfatol. For as rare as I did Zelfatol, I really like Zelfatol and what it does. So I'll put it right below Zelfatol in the S tier. Don Mang, I don't like as much because there's the silence things. Um, there's the silence things in the first area. The bit this is this is kind of the 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 Bardem's medal of this expansion. It hurts a lot, and this is the the 270 sink level the dungeon, and everything hurts so much. If you try to big pull, it's really tough to do. It's really tight no matter how good you are, basically, unless you have a really good group all around. First boss is... It's neat to, with how much... With the, the, the constantly spamming the ground with puddles you have to dodge and there's two tiers. So you could watch where the safe spots are and move as you go. It's, again, hell for casters, though. Well, at least Red Black Mage, it's hell. And it's all right. Then you get into the foresty area instead of the flowery area. I think I like the look of the flowery area more. Um, the music's alright. I don't like the pools here. When you get to the big tree pool, the one with the trees, even if you do small pools, that's an annoying pool. Second boss is alright. I like the, the growing mechanic. And you have to take the tethers and spread out and take some of the tethers. But the boss will still get some of the tethers and evolve. The The brambles can get kind of annoying. But they're cool that they, that they exist. That it's trying to impede you. It's an evolution again. I like evolution fights. Yeah, so... It's a... And then there's the final... I don't like the palace area. The palace area is like bright and shiny and white, but eh. And then the final boss is annoying. Like, it goes through the three distinct phases. It's frogman phase. It can turn you into... It can do the... the f turn you into a frog bit. That can come out of nowhere. Uh, the, the, the big drop one with the platforming, that... I'd see what they were trying to do, but also sometimes I feel like I fell through the platform, and other times I feel like I walked off a mile and I didn't fall, so it feels inconsistent. And it's just like, it's real pace breaking. Yeah, and the, the, the big tentacle thing is not an interesting phase at all to me it's kind of boring then it goes back to frog phase and then if you let his ultimate go off he turns into a tiny frog and it's like ah oh, it's a joke it's a joke it's a joke do you get it and it's it's this is probably the weakest dungeon looking ahead at all the other dungeons everything else that shadowbringers offers this is definitely the weakest of all the dungeons in Shadowbringers. So if I... It's a good dungeon still. It's still quality. I would still say it's quality. But yeah, it, it's it's definitely not the best. For sh I'm gonna say... It's... I would rather do she Sui, so it's a low, it's a high B. But given that's the lowest that the dungeons get, and Kugane Castle was worse, so, and the burn was worse, so... The worst of Shadowbringers is better than the worst of Stormblood. That says something. That says something for the quality that, oh, less dungeons is not a bad thing. They can make dungeons better. Speaking of better, Katana Ravel. 
As much as I don't like single pool enemies and they need to be interesting and the single pool enemies aren't too interesting, they're very fitting thematically and I do like it being there just to be like, okay, here's your introduction to mechan to how stuff like it's a good introduction of okay owl statues will do aoe's watch owl statues you need that's a good introduction and then the second one of the single magic guy is again okay there's still owls but now the walls are in different places you have to be ready to be in different positions depending on which owls and where that owl is and then you get into the first boss and it's using owls and AoEs based around it, and cutting the arena into half, and then half again. So that you could have like only a quarter of the arena safe to avoid AoEs in. And so I think that's... I think that's fun and interesting at worst. That's at worst. So it's like, it's... It's a good evolution of tying trash mobs into the actual uh, boss design. The second boss doesn't do that though. I mean, I guess it kinda does with every time it screeches, that's when you get a big group of bats coming in, but that doesn't happen during the boss fight. Also, the second area is really cool and really great that it's tied to the story, which you'll see when you get there. Um, the bat boss is fun. I do like learning that the, the pillar snapshot, the the big anger stomps it does is a good test of healing along with all the other AoE damage that goes out. Uh, the tank buster hits pretty hard. This is another step up dungeon of like, okay, difficulty. This is kind of, this is getting kind of big hits. Um, and it's also where heals stop, start to fall behind in terms of how high HP goes. Uh, yeah, and so, uh, final area, you get into the foresty area, it looks cool, you fall down the waterfall. Some of these pools are hard to pull off, but they are great when you know how to pull them off. Even if you do single pull them, it's they're pretty interesting to deal with. Normally I don't like just, oh, randomly thrown in AoEs, but it does it in a good way here. And then the enemies jump down like, oh, we're missing? All right, fine, we'll take care of it ourselves. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and it looks nice. And then the final boss, I don't really like the poison puddle mechanic, but otherwise it's it's all right. I think it's a pretty good boss, but the poison puddles bring it down. I like the fact that you have to watch the heads for if it's the two-pronged lightning or the one-pronged fire and you have to adjust accordingly. There could be stack markers there and that's a hint of which one you have to do. So I'm going to put it below some all hard, I'd say. It's a good dungeon, though. It's one I use to like, I like this dungeon for getting like footage of stuff. It's a good footage dungeon because it's not too like spoilery in any way as well and then we got Malik as well which again not too really spoily at all that uh the music is kind of really boring it's good ambiance but in terms of dungeon music it's eh some of the pools are interesting, good enemy variety. I do like the one point where you come outside in the middle of, like when you get to the dungeon, there's a giant, the, the, the giant hole in the ground and you come out in that point at, after the first boss, which also first boss is fun. The ads in that first boss are kind of weird inclusion. The boss seemed to do enough without those, but I also feel like they put those there to, it would be too fast of a fight if you didn't have that ad phase there with the two ads spawning. So they put that there just to slow the fight down a little, which if that's the reason I can, I can probably see that. Um, path to the second boss, uh, the bomb enemies basically always kill themselves and you never kill them, which is dumb. Uh... Good variety of enemies in there too. 
Second boss is really funny because it's a bunch of buckets. The amount of knockbacks is a bit much. And how much you have to run away because it does the the ground AoE, the pulverize with the drill. And then it also does knockback. So there's a, there's a lot of getting pushed to the edge and then needing to run to the middle again. It's a bit much. Uh, then there's another big pull, which is kind of fine. And then there's the golems that slowly uh, wake up. And yeah, it's cool that they're giving you time to kill them before they wake up. But it's also like, there's the two of them, and then there's the three of them. And what's the point? It's so... Just have them wake up instantly. That would have been more interesting. I, I mean, maybe... Maybe I'm talking with hindsight here that it's more interesting if it would have just woken up immediately. Instead of letting you slowly kill it off. And then final boss doesn't have any tank busters really. It has some high auto attack damage, but doesn't tank buster to some high raid wide damage. And then it's mostly just do the mechanics that show up. I do like being able to place myself with those the, and having to run around the boss to follow the mechanics. That's kind of neat. But I'm like, eh, it could be better, I'd say. At least I think it could be better of a final boss. It's, it's interesting in its uniqueness but beyond that it's kind of meh so i'm gonna say it's better than don't make though i think i'm gonna actually leave it right there it's a low a it's not terrible it's got a lot of boringness in there but the bosses are pretty pretty good in general and yeah i also i do like how it's it's placement in the story though it's a good for the story, it's good placement, but also as a dungeon itself, separating it from the story, eh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. Low A. Where did I, where did I put that other one again? Where did I put Katana Ravel? I already forgot where I put Katana Ravel. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. All right. Well, let's move on from that to. Mount Gog. This is a very hard one to do big pulling in. This is a real test of your ability. Uh, first boss is interesting. I do like... Sometimes the wind AoEs are a bit hard to see. I wish those were... Especially at launch, I wish those were a bit more visible. A bit more contrasting with the looks of the dungeon. Speaking of the looks of the dungeon, I love the evolution of the looks of the dungeon from just rock to heavenly rock that's being built to a full-on palace. That's really cool. Uh, the enemy evolution is good, I would say. The demon walls are kind of meh, though, their inclusion. Uh, first boss, good. Tornadoes could have been more visible. I do like the line AoE attack it does. Second boss, the cube... Um, I'm in between on this one just because it does do a bunch, but it it's hard to tell what each thing, the names of each attack, I can never remember which one's which. What's the tank buster? What's raid wide? What's the summoning the ads? Yeah, the orbs that do the donuts. And the, ran the randomness in the boss is kind of neat though. I like that. Final section is a really cool section of just, okay, I'm buffing the enemies, let's go. They're gonna grow, they're gonna hit you really hard. Alright, let's go, let's go. And then you get to the final boss, which is, it's like the drag race arena in the burn, but also it's different with how it uses the mechanics. I do like all, again, it's a boss that's really hard to tell which one's the tank buster, just because it's all musical terms. Except for, like, the one attack that's called, like, Puppetry. But I do like how dynamic the fight is with the... When it summons the puppets and which attack it uses. You have to pay attention to which one's the real one. Which will do an extra attack. Because, oh, this boss is... This one is the real boss. In addition to an AoE around it, it will do a donut. And there's a small sliver of space of safety. 
will all the dolls just do the normal attack? Or it does the four-pronged AoE. That's cool. Uh, I, I wish it had uptime when it does the the rings that explode into line AoEs, the orbs that go into the rings and shoot lasers. I wish that had uptime. That would have made that more interesting. Yeah. Uh, but overall, it's a I like the dungeon. The music's good. The looks are good. It's hard. The second boss is meh. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna high A between Vault and Bear Solars, I, I would say. Yeah, that's a good spot for it. That's a good spot. And then Amaram just pointed up there just because it, it deserves at least a temporary spot in double S. This is a visually stunning dungeon the whole way through. First, you're going through city streets are burning, people are dying, enemies are appearing out of thin air. Then after the, then the, you get to the first boss. And the skyscrapers are crumbling around you. You are dodging the skyscrapers falling on you as actual mechanics. And the meteors dropping and all that. And you have to dodge the meteors. And it's, it's, do, it's doing destruction. All of its attacks. All of its attacks are like pure destruction incarnate. And then you notice at this point, the map... The map locations tell a story in themselves. If, while, while you're being told a story in the voices, the map names themselves are also telling a little bit of a story. But then after that boss that's destroying the skyscrapers, which is also a good boss by the way, the dungeon mobs up to that point are also good, you go into the next area and you go from just blazing city streets and all that to everything crumbling around you all the buildings are gone they've all crumbled you're just on a small floating platform now as you go forward and everything and you could see the destruction in the distance everything around you is burning and being destroyed and you're being attacked on the platform by the enemies flying around and then you get to the second boss which is a bit of a glorified uh trash fight it's it breaks the pace a little bit of just like... I mean, it, it does it good just because it's a lot of enemies at once. It's just throwing them at you. And it's it's a good showing of the hunger of the main boss. And also the constant flood of enemies that is the final days. The final days involves a lot, a lot of enemies just flooding in. And then you are told just a bit further... And you will see the end of a world. And then you go through the teleporter. And that, at, that, that framing, the moment you look out. Holy crap, I still get chills. I, the first time I did that dungeon, our party stopped for like a full minute and did not move forward. We just stopped. And none of us could believe what we were seeing. And it, it was, it's gorgeous, but also terrible in the destruction. It's, it's the mo um, it, it's hard to put into words just how it felt the first time to see that, that view. And the entire time you're fighting the enemies, dodging all the AoEs that are coming at you, all the enemies throwing their hardest attacks at you, I you just can't shake the feeling of everything you've just seen. And it still makes me shiver every single time I see it. And then you get to the final boss. The, the biggest scourge that was destroyed the world the most. And it's actually pretty hard. It does some... A lot of different things. It has the death plane. It has the platforms on the side to avoid the apocalyptic rays. It has the smaller rays. It has the heads that makes the small rays. It has the painful AoEs. It does a bunch. 
And then no matter how good you are, by the time it dies, you have so little of the platform left. There's like nothing left of the platform. You've been, you get pushed to the edge. You are g almost about to fail by the time it dies. And that's stressful in its own way. And it's super thematic. And it's just a beautiful dungeon all around. The music, the looks, the boss is the second boss. As like a fight, I don't rate it too highly. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave it in the in that place, the bottom of double S. Because it's just an absolutely amazing, 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 amazing dungeon. It's great. And it's not a moment I will forget anytime soon. It it's it's fantastic. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum of fantastic, we have the twinning, which everyone basically remembers for the music. It does look cool. All the diff like the lore behind it when you see like oh all the different boxes and the pieces of stuff that like oh where. We're working on stuff in here, and that's cool that this box, the the changes they made to Circus Tower. And then you go into a deeper area, and it's this big, open, like, technological... It does a framing thing again. It does framing. It's not as good as the one in Amara, but you get out, and you see this, this big, wide area in the middle of the tower, and it's like... Holy crap, this tower is even bigger than I thought it was, and it goes deeper. Uh, first boss is kind of meh. They needed the the glass baubles at the edges, the sides of the arena, just to be like, Hey, you have to properly aim your AoEs. And the pouncing AoEs are like really huge, so it's hard to keep up time and also properly space them out so you're not hitting other people the prey or the 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 dashes the numbers number of swords is all right it there's plenty of room to fit all that in it's just an awkward fight i'd say the second boss try does limiting space better i would say with the the orbs and the the diamond the hatch the hatch aoe lines but that boss doesn't really have anything else to it besides that. That's that bot that that boss is failing is it really only has the limiting space with the hatch AoEs plus lightning orbs and then basically nothing else. The 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 trash mobs up to that second area are cool. The books you can read are really filled with lore and oh my god this story is amazing. Uh the looks of the area are cool as well, just because you're getting deeper in and it evolves. And then things... The the path up to the final boss is a bit meh to me. It's like... There's the green goo enemies, and then you have the thermal coil boil masters. I like that that's an enemy, but also... They're annoying to fight. But then you get to the actual boss, and... The Tycoon is a really good fight. It takes all the good parts of Alexander and just makes them even better, I would say. It takes, like, the Sacrament kind of AoEs. I, I, it's hard to explain. This one's hard to explain just because... I don't remember the names, but, like, the fact that it also freezes them in time... It, it shows you where the AoEs are going to go, but then it stops them. So you have to not step in them now because they are active. And if you step in them, it will break time itself and cause an explosion. But you also know ahead of time where the AoEs are going to be hitting through. Then there's also the fact that the direct middle of the arena is basically always safe for the the red AoE markers that appear. What are the, the void puddle thingies? I don't know, I just think that basically this is a it's a really good fa a really good boss. Um It is a bit simple when you get down to it because it just it has the it, it does evolve actually. It does evolve eventually because it it does mechanics separated, then it starts combining mechanics and gets a lot more hectic the further you get on. 
but it doesn't get too hectic. It gets hectic enough. So I I, I, I like the fight. So I'm gonna I'm gonna S No, first two bosses bring it down. I'm gonna put it somewhere in the A tier. That's just a temporary spot. Somewhere in the A tier. Um, below Siren Song C. Yeah, that's a good spot for it. Mid A, it's the mid A. That's pretty good. And then we have Academia Anadar. Um, this is a. Yeah, this is a really good one all around. Except for the second boss. The lore implications are cool. The fact that this ties into Archeotonia. The the fate that gives you the frog suit is cool. Quetzalcoatl is a cool fight. Um, It's kind of bland just because... I mean, the middle area is kind of cool looking. But the first and third areas are kind of very similar until you get to the Quetzalcoatl Arena. That, the Quetzalcoatl Arena looks cool. The the garden area looks cool. The first boss's arena is nice, though. The first boss, I like how the two different trikes do different things. I just wish they played off each other a little bit more. Instead of just being like, Oh, hey, I'm A, you're B. We're gonna alternate. I wish they played off each other a bit more. Second boss is kind of just completely boring. I'm gonna keep spinning and throw my tentacles around. Brr. And then parts of the arena are going to be colored and poisony. And they're barely going to hurt you if you stand in them. Brr. And then I'm going to throw up on the tank. Because I'm I'm Kuthu Kukukulane. Or however you say it. I, I can never say that name. Kukulane. Eh. It's an air fight. But then Quetzalcoatl is really interesting. It has the orbs you could eat. Good AoE patterns. The knockback part is short and sweet. And also, it, but it's still also sort of dangerous. Um, it's at least high A. I'm gonna... Let's see, do I like put it in S? No, I wouldn't put it in S. I would put it above Katana Ravel, that's for sure. And it's definitely the better dungeon against the twinning. Do I like it more than Baelsar's Wall? Do I like it more than Gubalhard? Uh, yes. Do I like it more than Gulg? Do I like Mount Gulg better? Yes, that's where I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it right there. I don't like it more than Mount Gulg, I'd say, mentally. But I do like it more than Baelsar's Wall, I think. Um, yeah, alright, so, and then we get the Grand Cosmos. This dungeon is super undertuned for when it was released. Nothing hurts here, basically, except for the final boss, which can instant kill you. But despite the threat being super low, the pools are really fun to do. You basically have to big pull to make this dungeon, dungeon interesting at all. But, you know, when you do big pull, it's kind of... The trash pulls are pretty fun. Uh, I like the look of the mansion. The garden area looks very pretty. First boss. I The hitboxes of the brooms suck. That much, I am not going to deny. The hitboxes of the brooms in the first boss suck. But in general, the boss is fun. There's stacks, there's spread, there's avoiding the brooms. If the brooms had clearer hitboxes, I would be think this was a really good boss. Second boss with the seeds, it's a lot like the second boss of Never Reap, but you don't have to do nearly as much work and not don't have nearly as much time being wasted if you fail. And there's one for each of you. So it's basically, okay, grab this one, move it. Okay, get back to the boss. So it's a lot faster paced. Uh, it does the ground, li the safe space limiting. Melee can stack on top of the tank and be perfectly safe. At least one of them can. Um, 
third area is kind of slow. You got the big drake and then some pork seas. That's an alright pool. And then you have all the knights coming out of the paintings. That one's kind of boring. I kind of don't like that one, especially because, like, the, when you get the two knights with the guy on the horse, one of them's a healer, so you have to single target, even though it's an AoE situation, and that's kind of antithetical to how AoE works. And then the final boss is Pepsi Man with a sword, but also it's fun. He does left light, left slash right laser sword. Uh, people not understanding not to break the furniture is kind of annoying. People always steal. Like, how many times I've had a bard run up in front of the boss next to where I am standing and take the thing I am going to put my fire in? It has happened so many times. You're a bard. You can run around fine. Go for the one of the further items so that I can stay on the boss. Why are you making me go run so far away? It's kind of an annoying mechanic, and it only does it twice. You'd think it would have kept going, but I guess it can only summon some chandeliers only. And then it just repeats mechanic really quickly. The, the distance tether plus numbers, you could just stay in melee range. You don't even have to actually do the distance tether. Just stay close. Just face tank it doesn't hurt enough to matter. I say this as someone who's had healed that dungeon a bunch. Just face tank it. Don't even don't even bother. Let the melees have their melee up time. Um this is a dungeon that I've done a lot, so I've had a lot of time to think about this one. So I'm going to say it's below Anator. Um do I, I put it above Katana. I'm putting it there for now. Let me think. No, I think I like Katana Ravel more. But I like it more than Twinning, so I'm going to put it... Right there. Nope, nope. Yeah, right there. Below Siren Song, but above Twinning. Alright, four more dungeons to go. Academy, or... Amnesis Anator. The first one was Academia, this one's Amnesis. The first area is really cool the first time you go through it, but it's also super boring every other time. It's a lot like the Praetorium problem of like, oh man, this is so cool the first time. Okay, now it's boring. The pools are slow, they have a lot of HP. It's not even interesting to look at, even as you're going forward. There's not much to look at, like, oh, we're going through some crevices now. And now we're landing. It's only after you land that you get st good stuff to look at. And then you get the boss. Co it's called Unknown. Like, we don't even know what the boss is. It's a T-Rex that has, like, laser beams and sores all over it. That's funny. Um, it's an alright boss. The Getting used to how the clock stops is kind of rough the first time or two. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's alright. The second area is pretty good. I like the little, like, the... The little, uh, like, the... Oh, what's it called? The, the like, the lawn area of that would be... If it was, like, a school, there's the little lawn area in the middle which they'd have fountains and trees and all that. That's a cool little set piece. Uh, the second boss is... Weird, I guess? It's... I mean, it's good, it's good, cause, just because you have to pay attention to the ordering of the AoEs, but they don't go off for a while, and then you have to also adjust to if it's an in from a donut or an out because it's a, an AoE surrounding him. Uh, it's... It's alright. Third section's kind of interesting. It does the kind of hatch thing, I think, better than most just because of... The thematic lore it's adding, it's not just, oh, it's an egg, it's Sahagin are, well, I guess they're not Sahagin here, but the Sahagin are breaking open crystals full of memories with monsters in them. That's interesting. That's an interesting thing to watch. Yeah, you're still going to have to fight a bunch of them no matter what, but it's an interesting thing to look at and not just, oh, an egg hatched. There was no avoiding an egg hatching. Oops. 
And then I like how the final boss, the, the, the matriarch, the queen, or whatever it is, it's Sestasha again. Look, think of the parallels to the Sestasha boss with the, the summoning the ads. With the grates, that you have to stand on the grates. That's kind of funny. But also she does a lot more with the, the hands, the water hands, and having to, making you move around a lot. I don't like how she's not an omnidirectional boss, but there's points where you physically cannot get positionals when she jumps to the walls. You cannot move her as a tank, you can't spin her as a tank, and so positionals just become impossible for a while. And that's kind of annoying, but otherwise it's a fun fight that has a lot happen. Getting people to do the mechanics of Sestasha is actually interesting and a funny, like, dev moment. Like, haha, nobody does Sestasha mechanics anymore. Let's make them do Sestasha mechanics or you can't kill the boss because it defends her. I think that's funny in a dev kind of way. But, uh, overall it's kind of boring. It's kind of bland. It's interesting the first time as a story, but, like, otherwise it's kind of bland. I'm going to put this below even the twinning. It's not quite Don't Meg levels, but it's, it's just kind of bland. I'm going to put it above... Yeah, it's above Corn Hard. I don't like it quite as much as Gubal. I do like the music of the place, though, at least. But yeah, overall, it's kind of just bland. All right, and now the Hero's Gauntlet. Now this, once again, is how you do a story fight. This dungeon does not get old no matter how many times I do it. The most old it gets is the third section with the 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 the, the big battle scenario. And like, oh, everyone you know from the roll quest is coming out to help you. That's neat. And there's also Hildebrand can be there. That's neat. But like people always forget that one of those pool that two of those pools are forced single pools. And they'll try to run off with them, even though you should just stand there and fight them right there. Though I guess that's on players and not the dungeon. Though the pools themselves are kind of boring in that you have to single pool them there, because they don't really do much otherwise. It's very much a set piece kind of area. The set piece is cool, but the actual contents aren't. Uh, the, the first section does the enemies appearing out of thin the first two areas i guess because it's all the same enemies the, the whole time but the first two areas do it a lot better uh first boss interesting i do like how it gives you a lot of time to like okay this is how it's gonna work and then it does two and then it does the line versions and so, okay there's an evolution here i like it there's also some decent tank busters and read white aoe's second boss is a bit annoying to deal with if you don't have people understanding which blind people aren't going to understand how the zombies work so it can be kind of rough to get a good group there and uh the the tanking that one's kind of annoying too and then there's the part where she makes only a tiny spot of the arena safe the rest of it's poison that's kind of a bit rough uh yeah, I'm not really a fan of her. Everyone freaked out about her because of her design. But, yeah. And then the final boss, the Berserker. The Berserker is a really cool fight. It, hit hard, it hits hard. It does stack marking well. It does spreading well. I don't like how the one point is if the tank's not quick about it. You could lose positionals. But that's the tank's fault, not the boss. It's a very quick, fast-paced fight. And it's great all around. So I'm gonna I'm gonna up it at least to S, I think. I think I like it more than that, than that, than that, than that. Better than Home Mister. Better than Zelfatol. Better than Yeah, I don't think I like it as much as Arf, but I look even like it more than Lost City Hard, which I thought was really neat. Matoya's Relict. This is the definition of Undertuned. Uh, the, uh, this is another dungeon that I like to do a lot just for easy filming. Just because the pools are easy, the bosses are easy. 
Well, first boss is kind of rough sometimes when you don't have a tank immediately pull it off to one of the holes. Fun fact, you're not supposed to tank this boss where it spawns. You're supposed to immediately bring it to the sides so that you can pre-position for when the the the, 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 the giant mud ball spawn. Pre-position, that's smart. Uh, second boss is like, it, ha I, it should have more HP. The second boss really needs more HP. It dies way too fast, even if your party is undergeared. Like, holy crap, that boss just melts. And it has some interesting stuff. It, it Combining the, the icicles that go all the way through, combining the side AoEs that go through the arena and segmented that only one line is safe, adding in AoEs you have to spread out there. It has some cool mechanics in there. You just don't really get time to do it besides one go around. I guess maybe that's a benefit of it that you it's a, it's such a fast fight. But I don't know. I think it's 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 missing a lot of potential because of that. And the the area it's in kind of looks bland. The first area looks cool. The second area looks bland. Third area looks amazing. I love the color lava floating everywhere. That's that's super neat. I wish you did more with that area. That, that's, there was a lot more potential you could have did with that area. At least I think so. Um, yeah. And then also someone has to stay and guide the frog to the very end. You can't all just return. Also, I like the idea of you collecting the stuff to create the final boss. That's really neat. Uh, yeah. And then the, the Poixy final bo the boss is... Does a lot of different stuff, and I like all the different things it does. It tries to do something different at every step of the way, and that that's really neat. It's a really good final boss. Even even the downtime section where you're trying to not get sucked in, that's a neat section even. I still don't get bored of that. I know exactly how to, like, I only ever have, have to move, like, two inches to solve the entire mechanic. But hey, it's cool that it's there. So yeah, it's overall it's a good dungeon. Middle section's kind of bleh. Definitely above uh, the the mansion, the 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 whatever it's called, the Grand Cosmos. I think it's kind of like the Anti Tower, but does the Anti Tower better? I mean, it is with the same NPC. I think it does Anti Tower better. Better than Gubal Hard? Yeah, I'm gonna put it there. It's not quite Basil's Wall, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And then finally, our newest dungeon, the final dungeon of the entire game before Endwalker, Pagalthon. Pagalthon is a pretty neat set piece dungeon. Um. Some the the first pool people forget there's ranged enemies involved, so it's kind of annoying when you get tanks who try and ignore ranged enemies like they don't exist. It has some big enemy problems like a lot of other pools have. Like, oh, we're gonna throw big giant enemies at you along with some tiny enemies, so it can be really annoying. Um, first boss is fun if you have a tank who pays attention and brings it back to the middle. Bringing the boss, the first boss to the middle is super important, but also dealing with the orbs that appear is also cool. Dealing with the or the lightning orbs and getting the big AoEs onto the, the lightning poles. Uh, I don't like that you do lose some positional timing no matter what. No matter how good you are, you're going to lose some positionals. Uh, second section's kind of meh. I do like how it... You get a big pull, which is cool. The big pull you could do there is really cool. As you watch Estinian and the dragon go v Vitra. Just, oh, actually, that's not Vitra. Vitra's Endwalker. Uh, Tiamat go crazy and just destroy everything and then they help you destroy the a pool of enemies and then they go disappear and do other stuff for a bit 
The giant Magitek machine thing is a really interesting fight that I think is missing a lot of potential because most runs I do finish it before it does the knockback AoE. There's a knockback AoE in the second phase. If you didn't know that, congratulations, you just learned something about the second boss of Tagalthon. There's a knockback AoE that's supposed to, you have to get knocked back to the correct section of the map so that you don't get lasered. Which, like, that would be more interesting if maybe that was earlier in the fight or something. It's weird that it's so late that you can very easily skip it. I think it either needed more enemies, maybe enemies with more HP or something, just to actually make mechanics get out. Maybe faster pacing on the mechanics, I don't know. Something to improve that fight. And then there's also the the actual core of the machine. All it does is spam AoE, it doesn't have any mechanics. The AoEs don't even hurt that much. Like one AoE heal will be enough to save that fight, that phase. It's kinda... I don't know, I don't know. Eh. But then there's the small pool before the, the big ride section where Tiam Tiamat's like, hey, ride my children across this field and you can w see the battle going on underneath. And it's, it's a really cool set piece. And I still don't get tired of watching it. After all the runs I've did of Pagathon, it's still cool to ride that dragon across the field all the way into the distance. And then you can do one more big pull with the help of Tiamat. And I think Estinian's there. I already forget if Estinian's there or if he's off doing something else. Just because I'm focused on doing the pull usually. And then you fight Bahamut. Like, literally, it's just Bahamut almost. It has some Ifrit mechanics, but also you have Ockmorn, you have Mega Flare, you have Giga Flare. That's funny. Making casual players do Mega Flare. Imagine if it had the Safety Donut Part 2, where you have to spread to drop all the AoEs, and then you have to stack. That that would have been so hilarious if it did the Safety Donut as well. I would have loved that to just, hey, this is how far we've come with mechanics. We're taking what used to be a Savage-only mechanic and putting the whole thing into a story-required dungeon. That would be hilarious. Also, the sunset of the whole dungeon is really cool, and I think the different areas you go through look nice. It's a good evolution of design. The music's kind of boring, just because it's a Molja kind of music. It's kind of hype for like, yeah, things are going down, but like, as terms of listening, it's meh. So it's going to be a high A. High A at least. I think I'm going to put it above Mount Golg actually. Just because... Mm, do I? Just because... The second boss really... It's, the second boss is worse than the second boss of Mount Golg. So no. Macadamia Anadir though. Is it better than Anadir? No, definitely not. Bear Soul, Bear Soul's Wall, I have, no, better than Relict, in terms of, if you have to actually put in effort, it's a better dungeon than Relict, but Relict the one is the one I'd rather get, because it's so much easier. And that's it, that's all 77 dungeons in the entire game. And, again, as you can see, from the point of Sestasha as, like, the base level of what a dungeon should be, I think the ma vast majority of dungeons are better than Sestasha if Sestasha is a base level. And basically, no dungeon after Heaven's Word is anything worse than Sestasha. Heaven's Word had some all worse. I didn't- I don't like Sink Mokion's Arboretum. I butchered that so hard. Pharaoh Serious Heart is kind of bad. Dusk Vigil's bad. Uh, Stone Vigil Hard. Oh, that's Aroma Born. Dole Breaker Hard's garbage. And then that's it. Oh, and Never Reap. Never Reap's all. I'm. Yeah. But like, th this is. I'm happy with this rating. I'm happy with this. So yeah, if you want to be doing this kind of thing, feel free. 
send it to people you want to be raiding. And if you haven't already figured, I've been splitting this into multiple videos. I'm going to give you separate, uh... I'm going to start putting separate images up now of just Heavensward Dungeons, just Stormblood Dungeons, just Shadowbringers Dungeons. So you can see how those rate without interference of, look at all these dungeons, look at all these, there's a ton here, look at all these. But can you see just where the Shadowbringers is? I'm gonna... I'm gonna do an editing, like, highlighting of... Here is where you saw at the very beginning, at the end of the A Realm Reborn video, how all of A Realm Reborn stacked up. Here's where all of Heaven's Word stacked up. Here's where all of Stormblood stacked up. And here's where all of Shadowbring is stacked up. And that is my rating of... Every dungeon in Final Fantasy up through Shadowbringers. All 77 dungeons.